You're watching SKN Newsline TV live on sknnewsline.com. Now you can have SKN Newsline on the go. Introducing SKN Newsline Android mobile app. Search SKN Newsline in the Google Play Store. Download the app free and stay up to date with TV news in St. Kitts and Nevis in the palm of your hands. With this app, you can watch your news reports, watch our live news feed on SK Newsline TV, engage with us and other app users in the chat room, look at our special features, send us news tips, and call us directly. It's, it's news, news on, on the, the go. go. The SK Newsline Android mobile app. Download, Download it free, free today. today. Why read the news when you can watch it? Introducing SKN Newsline, the Federation's only online TV news platform. SKN Newsline is an online TV news platform covering news in St. Kitts and Nevis. We provide a daily and accurate news on the big stories and stories of interest that other media outlets have ignored. You can watch SKN Newsline on our website, www.sknnewsline.com or Facebook page at www.fb.com slash SKN Newsline and also subscribe to our SKN Newsline YouTube channel. SKN Newsline, your world, your news. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're covered when your house gets flooded. Getting your settlements quickly and fairly when a fire hits your home and making sure your business can keep going even after an accident happens on site. At Najico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. The team in the government should be pleased with the election results in Nevis as this is an indication that it is heading in the right direction politically. That is the view of political pollster Peter Wickham of Cadres in Barbados. I don't know that the Labour Party would want us to think that, uh, and perhaps they will push back against that. But yeah, I think it's great uh, that for them, because it says that at some level, as part of the of the union, that people are, are essentially supporting the team unity platform. It was not too long ago in Tobago where we saw a local election in Tobago uh, in which the... Um, People's Partnership partner in in um, Tobago did very badly. Against that background, it was easy to see what was going to happen to the Kamala Pasad Basasa administration at the national level when elections came. And I mean, everyone who understands the way that this thing works understands that wherever you have local government, invariably it is a reflection of what happens at the national level. I mean, the logical exception to that would probably be Barbuda. Uh, Barbuda is a special case, but um, it is a, a micro island government in, in so many ways. And I think that uh, Nevis has sufficient critical mass to tell us a lot about what's happening on the main. And so my feeling is that it is an endorsement for the Team Unity platform. Mr. Wickham reiterated that the Concerned Citizens Movement CCM of Mark Brantley had continued its growing trend over the last few elections. And he was not surprised that they won four of the five seats up for grabs. Mr. Wickham noted that the new seat that the CCM won from the Nevis Reformation Party, NRP, the St. Paul's constituency, was a marginal seat. He said there was enough information that the seat could have been won by either party. The previous representative of the area, NRP's Roberto Hector, said he's challenging the result of that seat in the court due to what he alleged are electoral irregularities on and prior to election day. That seat was the weakest of the, of the four for the NRP. And it was not surprising that it was the first one that fell to the CCM. So there was really no surprise in it. Uh, I don't know that it was really about individuals in that particular seat necessarily. I think it was more about a national conversation that Nev Nevisians are having. When I say national at the level of Nevis, um, that showed that there was a swing across the board towards the, the, the CCM. And it was reflected in all of the seats that the CCM held, not just uh, that one. So before that they held, they all showed an improvement. The one that they did not win, there was also a swing towards the CCM. And that one is just it wasn't big enough for them to bring it home. So I would prefer not to look at that seat on an individual basis and see it as part of a conversation. If it was a situation where uh, the performance in that seat was unusual, then I would have been, been, been surprised at the outcome. But it was not unusual. It was consistent with the swings that we've seen across the board. 
Meanwhile, regarding the Nevis Reformation Party, Mr. Wickham said it has to seek new youthful leadership in order to challenge the CCM for government next election. I also heard the argument largely because Patrice Nisbet um, at the federal level r runs in a seat which occupies a lot of the space which um, would, would have been Premier Paris um, win a whole round. So he has the strength at the federal level that could, could say that. But I personally am not seeing Patrice Nisbet in that role. Uh, and I say that, <clears throat> I say that uh, notwithstanding the fact that I, I consider Patrice uh, a friend. As, as, as the Premier Brantley, I also consider him a friend. And I think that Patrice is a decent fellow. I think, however, that his elevation to national office, his association with Labour Party, uh, and the fact that he has declined to take part in local politics in more recent times, suggests to me that he, he's operating on a different level now, and, and perhaps he would not be the logical alternative to Premier Parry. I think he may very well have been in the past, but I think he's been tainted a lot by the um, machinations in the, the, the iron days of the Labour administration. Mr. Wickerman said that Mr. Parry had served Nevis and the Nevis Reformation Party well, and it was time for him to step down. Mr. Parry, in January, announced that he was resigning from his post as leader of the party. The Nevis Allen Assembly was sworn in earlier this week after the December 18th election. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Ladies, 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 want the finest in hair care services? Then come, come to, to Diva, Diva Hair, hair in, in Pond Extension, Extension Bastere. We do nails, relaxers, weaves, haircuts, custom wig, color, hair treatment, lashes, and so much more. Our salon is clean and comfortable even while you wait. We take appointments only. Open on Mondays and Tuesdays at 10 a.m. with the last appointment at 5 p.m., Thursdays and Fridays at 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., and Saturdays at 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. To make appointments, visit our Facebook page, Devo Hair. Call us at 660-4884. Devo Hair in Pont Extension for the beauty in you. Listen, kids in Nevis Labour Party is threatening to take legal action to resolve what they allege to be electoral irregularities. Chairperson of the Labour Party, Marcella Lybert, said at a press conference on Wednesday at the Coy Building that the Electoral Office has refused to publish monthly electoral lists as required by law. And so what is happening there is that people's names are being taken off, removed from the list, they're being taken off from the list without their knowledge. And by the time they go in there, into the Electoral Office, they're telling them, OK, go and re-register. So it seems to be a little ploy. Take off your name, and then if you go, you say, okay, go and re-register. This just cannot be right. And so we must act and act now on these matters. There's so much illegal practices going on at the electoral office. Many months, revised monthly lists are not posted in breach of the law. Transfers are not posted. Even persons whose names are removed, that should be published. That is not done. The Labour MP also argued that the Attorney General, who is the minister responsible for election matters, is in a conflict of interest situation. She claims because of his position, he cannot fairly advise the government on electoral disputes. We have consistently pointed out the conflict of interest in having the Attorney General being the minister responsible for the electoral office. Serious conflict of interest is involved here because he, as the Attorney General, is supposed to be the person who they look to for legal advice, but he's also the minister. So when there are breaches at the office, what happens? Would he advise himself in these matters? It's a serious matter that needs to be addressed. Opposition leader Dr. Denzel Douglas also raised similar concerns about the function of the Electoral Office and the Supervisor of Elections, Elvin Bailey. The disregard by the Chief Registration Officer, one who is called Mr. Elvin Bailey, by his refusal to respond to our letters concerning the lack of publication of the electoral list, aligns with the modus operandi of the government of the day. The illegitimate removal of names of voters people who have voted before, many, many times before, removing their names from the voters list will not go on challenge here in St. Kitts and Nevis. The registration of voters who have not even seen the door of the electoral office, this 
must immediately cease as we must stamp out electoral office fraud and corruption from this country. The Labour Party has repeatedly criticized the government for closing the electoral office for months after the change in government in February 2015 citing political interference and victimization of electoral workers perceived to be supporters of the opposition. The government has countered, saying it was investigating numerous claims of electoral irregularities in the 2015 elections, including tampering of computers at the office. Attorney General Vincent Byron said late last year that the matters were still being investigated by the police as the irregularities were of a criminal nature. In December, police arrested former supervisor of elections Wingrove George and charged him with two felony counts of misconduct in public office. He was granted bail for $50,000 with two sureties. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Limewiga Funeral Home is the most affordable and only all-inclusive funeral home in St. Kitts and Nevis. Their modern facility houses a chapel, a viewing parlor, a repass room, a casket selection room, a print shop, a flower shop, and they offer cremation services. Their very affordable all-inclusive package includes embalming, overnight viewing, chapel services, and recovery after autopsy. For more information, call 466-1225-662-3118 or visit Limewiga Funeral Home at Limekeel Bastyr, where they offer service with compassion. Beach bar owners on Friars Beach are being evicted from the property and have been given until the end of February to vacate. John Francis, the owner of the Godfather Beach Bar on Friars Beach, told SK Newsline Tuesday that all the owners of establishments on the beach have been served letters to that effect from a company headquartered in Kuwait that owns the property. We got a letter from the owners of the, the, well, the representatives, the lawyers, uh, for the uh, lawyers for the owners of the property. Uh, we got that letter on, does, when was it? On Saturday. It was, it was served to me on Saturday by the bailiff um, that we had noticed to quit the property and to move, remove the whole, the whole structures and leave it in a sanitary uh, situation uh, within 28 days. Mr. Francis said he has been operating his bar since 2005, but it was only five years ago that a contractual arrangement with the beach bar owners and the property owners was put in place. We have a lease. Uh, we, was brought, we were given a lease, I think, uh, five years ago, um, uh, to, to uh, occupy the beach, to run a commercial enterprise. In other words, to do our beach bar operations. That's the lease that we have. You've been here how long? Uh, I, myself, I've had this bar since 2005. And um, you were only given a lease five years ago? Five years ago. So what was your remit before then? And then we were all squatting here. Um, this was sort of a general, uh, what's a common law practice that uh, has gone on in St. Kitts for the last, since, since we entered tourism. Um, you know, entrepreneurs took spaces on the beach. You know, first of all, they put their cooler. Uh, then afterwards, they put uh, a shade, an umbrella, a chair, and within, then they developed customers, mainly tourists or people who, who, who visit the islands. And eventually, they have a beach bar as such. Mr. Francis said he and the other owners had formed an NGO to discuss matters pertaining to their operations on the beach. Now that group is expected to work together to challenge the decision by the owners. So we will band together and uh, we will, of course, get individual uh, counselling. Uh, we all have individual lawyers, of course, uh, but then we need very soon to come together and speak as a single voice, both to the, land, the landlord and their representative, their lawyers, to the government, of course, and of course to the media and, whoever, and, and the people and to let them know what's going on because what is happening here will and does affect everybody in St. Kitts. Not everybody, but also the, 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 the wildlife that's happening in St. Kitts because over here it's wetlands. While not sure definitively what the area will be used for by the owners, Mr. Francis said he understands a hotel development will be built there. He's concerned that the natural environment will be compromised if such a development were to be constructed in that area. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. At Najico, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like knowing you're covered when your house gets flooded. 
getting your settlements quickly and fairly when a fire hits your home, and making sure your business can keep going even after an accident happens on site. At Nagico, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. The 2018 Black Sands Jump Off was held on Saturday night in Sandy Point. The Jump Off is a precursor to the start of the community festival slated this year from February 24th to April 7th. Tessa Wyatt, chairperson of the Black Sands Organizing Committee, spoke to SK Newsline about this year's festival, which she suggested promises to be one of the best. She spoke particularly of Knockshore Night, which is one of the most important events. Um, Knockshore Night, that's a big night. We have a very big artist who's coming in, Idonia, and so on. The feedback is like, wow, we can't believe. And Black Sands has invested a lot into Idonia. We have been preparing for this moment, and so I think the fans are looking forward to that. It's also looking forward to the soul clash between our two champions, our two national night champions, which are Street Vibes and Ecstasy Sound. So we're going to have an awesome national night. And of course, we have persons like Stephanie, uh, I'm Matt, and Fuller Dan, Hyatt's family, who are going to be on the national night. And of course, the Sweet Station band and other bands. So, national night for us, we anticipate a very big return on our investment. Ms. Wyatt also spoke about some of the events this year that will be different compared to last year, including an opportunity for a local artist to be signed to a record label in Jamaica. Um, what's new this year? We have rejected two new events, uh, one called Black Sun Sign. This one focuses on the local artists and we're actually trying to get them to be signed to a record label uh, from Jamaica called Home the Record, where they could actually receive their royalties and um, get the push that they always wanted. So we are working on that event. We also invested or uh, injected a new event called Gutty. It's a soca night because Black Sun never really had a soca night. A soca fet night is called Dutty in a Black Sun. It's a combination of paint, powder, mud, uh, glow, you name it. It's just a night of soca, fun, frolic. Just, it's just gonna be an awesome night. The Black Sands Bangalang 2018 will start on the 24th with the Miss Black Sand Swimsuit Pageant. Come to Caribbean Flavors Restaurant and Bar in Charlestown for the best in local cuisine. Have your food prepared on the spot or served in a buffet-style setting with quality customer service. Get your day started right with our variety of homemade breakfasts. Try our sumptuous lunches, wraps, sandwiches, and so much more. Located at the Cotton Gin Mall, Charlestown Nevis, overlooking the Charlestown Bay. Open Monday to Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Saturdays at 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. Call us at 469-9009 or 763-5452. The body of a young man believed to be in his early 20s was found in Gillard's Meadows area Saturday afternoon. The body was discovered by a passerby who reported it to the St. Kitts and Nevis Fire and Rescue Services, who then reported it to the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force. The body had what appeared to be injuries to the chest. It has since been identified as 23-year-old Shaquille Pemberton of New Road. Police investigations into the matter are ongoing and more information will be disclosed as it becomes available. In other police news, two persons are in police custody in relation to ammunition found during a joint operation between the Royal St. Christopher and Nevis Police Force and the St. Kitts Nevis Defence Force. On Friday at Greenlands in the vicinity of Springfield Cemetery, a search was carried out on a motor car that had two passengers inside. As a result, 50.45 rounds of ammunition and 59mm rounds of ammunition were found. Both persons were taken to the Bastyr Police Station and are currently in police custody. Police said investigations into this matter are ongoing. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. Why read the news when you can watch it? Introducing SKN Newsline, the Federation's only online TV news platform. SKN Newsline is an online TV news platform covering news in St. Kitts and Nevis. We provide a daily and accurate news on the big stories and stories of interest that other media outlets have ignored. You can watch SKN Newsline on our website, www.sknnewsline.com or Facebook page at www.fb.com slash SKN Newsline and also 
subscribe to our SKN Newsline YouTube channel. SKN Newsline, your world, your news. Now you can have SKN Newsline on the go. Introducing SK Newsline Android mobile app. Search SK Newsline in the Google Play Store. Download the app free and stay up to date with TV news in St. Kitts and Nevis in the palm of your hands. With this app, you can watch your news reports, watch our live news feed on SK Newsline TV, engage with us and other app users in the chat room, look at our special features, send us news tips, and call us directly. It's, it's news, news on the go. go. The SK Newsline Android mobile app. Download it free today. At Najiko, the things that matter to you matter to us. Like your boat when you're at sea and you get away from everything. Your home and the security of your daughter's things. And the car that you've had for too long. But after all these years, you just can't let go. At Najiko, we're about much more than just insurance. We're about the big things and the small things that mean everything. Attorney General Vincent Barron has announced that his office has instituted legal proceedings against opposition leader Dr. Denzel Douglas because he possesses a diplomatic passport from Dominica. The Attorney General was speaking in the National Assembly earlier this week. Dr. Denzel Douglas became disqualified from being elected as a member of the National Assembly and was accordingly required to vacate his seat in the National Assembly by reason of his becoming a person who, by virtue of his own act, in accordance with the law of the Commonwealth of Dominica, under an acknowledgement of allegiance obedience or adherence to a foreign power or state, namely the said Commonwealth of Dominica. Two, a declaration that Dr. Denzel Douglas has vacated his seat in the National Assembly of St. Kitts has vacated his seat in the National Assembly of St. Kitts and Nevis. The Attorney General said, additionally, costs and injunction restraining Dr. Douglas from sitting in the National Assembly and performing his duties as a member are being sought. An injunction restraining Dr. Denzel Douglas from taking his seat in the National Assembly and from performing his functions as a member thereof. Four costs and five. Such further or and or other relief as this honorable house, as this honorable court, beg your pardon, may deem just and expedient. Attorney General Byron stated to the House that Dr. Douglas was issued a diplomatic passport with number DP0000462 by the Commonwealth of Dominica, which recorded him as being a citizen of the Commonwealth of Dominica. According to Attorney General Byron, the law of Dominica requires all citizens to swear an oath of allegiance upon being registered as a citizen and that by common law of Dominica, a person who possesses and or travels on a Dominica passport is under acknowledgement of allegiance to Dominica. Dr. Douglas has previously denied that he is a citizen of another country and has repeatedly said that the government is seeking to deflect from the issues affecting the country. Andre Huey, SKN Newsline. You're watching SKN Newsline TV live on SKNNewsline.com.